Sure glad we got this big bottle of wine for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I will take some of that. Yeah? yeah. Here, tell us stay one. So <laughs> just give me the bottle. Okay. So yeah, why don't fine. we why don't we go try and go at it like this? We all know BTS, we all know blah blah blah. Let's re restart BTS. Let's not talk about the past stuff that we've shot. Let's start with okay, how do we move forward from this point on what is our structure what is our ambition what do we how do we let's plan it how do we do this yeah <laughs> <laughs> From Italy, shooting documentaries on your lean on a shotgun boogie. Shotgun boogie. I know that time is not on my side, unless I find the love of my life on a shotgun boogie. Shotgun boogie. I guess I'm dancing and I wanna keep it like that. Okay, I'm a sound engineer from Italy working on a documentary about the city of New Orleans with a six months visa with the help of a couple of friends that are insiders as me. They're asking questions to musicians that are returning our call. My English is not good. This is pretty much what I can tell you in 30 seconds. Oh, fuck, sorry. Well, fuck you. <laughs> I was just getting a mosquito. I just want to say that I'm, I don't want to give up on BTS. Is that where we're at? We keep talking about it too generally. That's what all the my meetings do, is they talk about it generally. Like when we're watching an episode about race or about um, education and crime, there's not a natural way for us to break and it. I'm trying to imagine how it could break and it just doesn't feel like that. I feel like I that diminishes agree. the content and that's scary to me to do that. Yeah. For sure. That would conceptually be my main concern is exactly what you just said. But have <clears throat> you guys got to a point where you have a proposition of an alternative of how to make it work? No. No. Okay. But yeah, it's definitely a race issue for sure. I mean, for we're, sure, we're in the South for sure. Because of this city, there's no like black section of town, really. Because I mean, there's some there's, projects stuff like that. Everything's but, all mixed up. It's all mixed up. You know, people had kept their slaves and right by the house, and now the people were always living right next door to each other. I mean, there's people like when they were having integration of schools, they were fighting over integration of schools. People still live next door to them. They didn't want them to go to school with their kids. Did that make any sense at all? It's pretty screwed up. Wait till my baby come on home to me. Yeah, I'm going down to the ground bus Wait till my baby come on. One thing about the South, you knew when someone didn't like you. You know, whereas the racial tension exists in the North and the East too, but it's just that it's not open. <laughs> You know, and people say, oh, well, it's the, you know, it's come up. No, it's, it's, it exists there, but at least in the South, you know who doesn't like you and who does, you know, uh, that's the difference. I feel like there are other places where you see less intense amounts of hatred. I feel like the South is so deep seated. You see really mean things happen. And it is an institutionalized thing. There's so many things systematically that do need to change. And I know there's a huge populace speaking out against it. And it's being dismissed because people are afraid of race war and class war, but it's just a matter of like revising old policies and trains of thought, like becoming more accepting. Stop hiding behind ancient ideas that were bad ideas, you know? We're still waiting for that to happen. Yeah, I went back down in Centerville, Texas Bay. Little girl, that's who I was. Racial things are always difficult to talk about, but I think that people feel like, a lot of people feel like slavery is over. That's in the past. We need to get over it. But it's so much a part of 
how people, how cultures relate to each other and, and specifically racially how people relate to each other. And a lot of people say, you know, but that was the time, you know, or people can say that was the time. But I think that we might still be in the time where at the end of the day, the white man has the say. It's hard for a young black man to grow up in the United States. I can't know that experience as like a young white person that came from a middle class background on the West what? Coast, right? Like I don't know that experience, but I can certainly have those conversations while being an ally or being helpful. I find like we've been trained to sort of be polite, which has some good things about it. And then also sometimes avoids what's actually going on. What's up, my dude? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Justin. How's it going, McCauley? It's going How good. How do you feel here at your premiere? I'm excited. Nervous, maybe? Yeah. yeah. There's more people coming. It's pretty good. Hey, Colleen. Look how many people. It's like almost full of them. When I first came here, I was like, okay, I, I want to do a documentary, but oh, I've never done it. And, uh, <laughs> and it's not that easy, especially if you have like six months. And I, I'm in love with this city. Definitely is a city that has like beautiful and awful size, like every, every city in the world, like, I would say. And I'm trying like, to, to get that, you know, like to have a portrait of the city, which hopefully is going to be fair enough. Uh, we also did this because we wanted to have all the community involved because we're just we're figuring this out as we go as we make it and um so it's important for us to have you guys see what it is and you know be able to talk about it and maybe help us out we yeah. have surveys kind of feedback questionnaires for after and they're outside so by the drink free beer, beer. By <laughs> the they're right <laughs> by the free <laughs> beer all right his visa was supposed to be up in a couple days and we spent the last six months making this and I actually just got a call from the lawyer a few days ago that I can stay a little bit more, which is, which is really cool. You should watch it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How do you think is their relation with discrimination in this city? Do you see a lot of racism? Do I see a lot of... Um, with the police, yes, definitely. I personally never seen them pull over a white man or a white woman and all my years here I've, I've never I've never seen that you know I saw one of the musicians here who's a huge musician here I saw a video of the police stop him in his car and about 10 police just all surround him it looked like something from Mississippi dragging them on the ground you know I was like what's going on He's not even doing nothing. You know, it was it was wild to see, especially a, a fellow musician that you know their character, you know, and, and you saw all these white police officers just jump on him. All y'all don't even need to take him down. You know, what's, what's going on? Uh, are you talking about Shamar Allen? Yes. Yeah. Did you see the video? Uh, yeah, I did, and we were trying to you know, have an interview with him. Didn't you think that was kind of wild for them yeah. to come up on him like that? It was fucked up. Yeah, I was like, damn, that that's wild. You know, it looks it looked it really looked out the blue and you did not need all those people to take down one person. And um it's things like that that remind you of the city's true dynamics and who is deemed to be in charge. You know, but that's going on all over America right now, not just New Orleans. Police are still twice as likely to pull you over if you're black. They'll assume worse of you because of your skin color here in New Orleans and all over America. And I'd also like to mention the um, Danzinger Bridge shootings, which is a huge catastrophe in New Orleans that I think the world and the country needs to know more about, um, where you know police shot two innocent black people dead on the Danzinger Bridge during Hurricane Katrina, one of them who was mentally disabled. Um, 
So that's you know something that's been happening here a long time ago, and people didn't protest about it like they did Trayvon Martin and, and Michael Brown. And it's something that we're fighting in New Orleans and all over the world. You were saying it's different for you, the racism, because you come from Italy. Yeah. But you just said that Italy's a very racist place as well. You don't have black lawyers. You don't, I've never seen a black policeman in Italy. The society has not allowed people to become more than an immigrant. Yeah, right. We are not there at all. Right. And harvest your most honest words. I think it's changing in small ways. There's, you know, there's shiftings and also across of the, all of the United States. There's starting, you know, like the, we're really trying to have more honest conversations about race, which I also think need to be honest conversations about class. Because there's a lot of poverty here and the, so that makes for like unequal educational opportunities, unequal health opportunities to take care of ourselves mentally or physically. The more that we talk about this stuff publicly, the easier it is to solve some of the problems for the politicians to hear us, for uh, the people in power to understand. And the same goes for New York City and, and Rome. You were saying how the Italians want to, they want to keep immigrants out of their country, but they want to have someone that they can pay $3 a day to pick tomatoes. I think that a lot of people don't like to talk about that because it makes people uncomfortable. But um, the fact of the matter is, you know, a lot of the stuff you see in the French Quarter was built by slaves. With all those layers of tin. You know, it's funny. I remember when I first moved here, and I and I had read this book called *The World That Made New Orleans* by Ned Sublet, which is an excellent book. In it, he talks about those iron bars on a lot of those beautiful buildings where the the plants are coming down, and he talked about how those, a lot of those were made by slaves. And I remember telling a friend that around the time that I'd moved here, and he said, oh no, slaves didn't do stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, the more I read about it, the more I learn about it, I'm like, slaves did everything. Probably there will always be sort of this underlying uh, tension uh, between the races. Uh, communication is a is an easy thing to do if people would be willing to communicate. These conversations that we're having now are usually the conversations that people have behind closed doors. You know that the band has on set break rather than on stage on the microphone or at a press conference. You know this is like the stuff that people talk about at home, when they're with their friends, at parties. And collect all the kindest lines Spread them like a grapevine and There's something about music that, that can help ease your, your misery. Uh, and and if, you, if you can sing or if you can play an instrument, uh, it, it's, it's therapeutic. So I'm sure that uh, my ancestors who were slaves in this country, uh, uh, that was their way of, of escaping the reality of their situation. And something came from that that is now uh, considered and, and is an art form. Those layers of timber that wrap around Musicians, artists, actors, everyone who is, you know, living in this artistic world where people come to us for trends and ideas, we should definitely be supporting these movements in any way possible, you know, using our music to fuel the movement and um, using your art or your voice in any way to contribute to it. No.